Okay. Oseo greetings and welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for checking out the channel. Uh, I want to say thank you and I hope uh, you get something or have gotten something uh, even if it's just a little something out of uh, my videos. Um, I've been wanting to do a welcome and I just you know I know it has to be freestyle but that means I have to do several takes to get the one that I think will work. So here we go. Um, the channel started at the very beginning of what we are calling the pandemic and it uh, soon at that time we had the George Floyd incident so in some ways I hope that viewers can if there's content in the videos that perhaps are offensive um, I hope that viewers will understand the trauma at the time and the need I had to put a context to uh, the trauma. And, uh, you know, I just want to be clear. Uh, I said it briefly in one of my videos. We, particularly people of color, are dealing with so much trauma. Um, it, it truly is amazing uh, that we are here today, you know. Um, so, how I dealt with my trauma uh, was through my videos. And I have to say that I think it was, for me personally, it's been a wonderful experience, a good way to express some things I felt about the George Floyd incident and the bigger picture, you know, um, we could say that incidents like George Floyd are isolated, but it gets to a point where some of us, we, we just, we see a pattern, you know, and it's a troublesome pattern here in the Americas. Uh, and I think I did explain that um, at the time it felt like it was just further dividing a nation that was trying to come together in the wake of a larger issue, a larger issue that affects all of us, you know. And so the George Floyd incident was just, I couldn't believe that the media needed to go there you know I don't I hate to say it that way but I, I just I guess the best way to say it is just how I said it in my video it was just bad timing you know and it uh, for people like me it made me want to put it in a context you know enough crying each time it happens uh, enough uh, being, you know, shocked and awed by it. It's like, what is, what is this? You know, where's it coming from? And my videos have helped me to understand for anything, uh, I feel that you have to go to a source. There is a source for everything. Things just don't appear, you know, things just don't happen. And in the case of American media, the incidences of uh, so-called, uh, you know, the uh, the killings of uh, black men. When does it end? So it made me look at the world, uh, and it made me look at our people, people of color. Uh, now, I don't mean to exclude anyone, but particularly people of color. I feel like there's something in my mouth. I don't know. Was, pardon me. <laughs> it just feels like hairs. Um, so, I wanted to look at what 
at our part was the idea. And the only thing that came up for me that I think is something that we all pretty much uh, are in sync with or have this uh, something that <clears throat> ties us together is religion. And it made me, so as I'm looking at the world to make sense of so many George Floyd incidents, forget the one, it, it, it became, okay, I'm home now, I'm working from home, you know, my, my, my eyes are seeing things a little more discerning, you know, what is this thing? Why does it keep happening? It just made me look at the whole picture. The, everything. I tried to think of everything that would go into this mix. What are we doing as a people? What is the media doing? Uh, what is the greater public doing? You know, everybody. <laughs> everybody shared in this, okay? Uh, and my findings were pretty... For me, it satisfied uh, the question above and beyond. I know that religion is a major part of how a people see themselves and how are they perceived, you know. Um, so then my videos took a turn toward a sort of calling out religion and so what I find that I want to do in this welcome video is talk to people as opposed to religions um, and if I were to sit and talk to individuals it would go something like this Um, whether you are or whether you identify as white, black, uh, red, yellow, uh, Latin, Latino, Asian, uh, Arab, Indian, East Indian, uh, whatever. I believe that we all have a duty to humanity that supersedes any religious doctrine, okay? So when I say that, what I mean is my thoughts on religion are not necessarily thoughts about people. I look at religion more so as doctrine that is often misunderstood, but as well, they have an origin. Uh, I hate to use wear out this example, but it is a, a major uh, topic in my videos. For example, the Jacob and Esau story. You know, I'm going to go there. Okay. So, that is one story of many religious stories that I feel can be interpreted to speak to the disenfranchisement of a people based on their or what is thought to be their origin. So we have this story and it it is it speaks to a deity that affirms a birthright even through deception being ciphered off away from the birthright holder so as as a a person of color who i i happen to identify as indigenous 
You'll see that in my videos as well. I explain that. I, I'm an American and uh, furthermore, I'm an American Indian. And I know that many of us are not used to seeing American Indians of, of, of a different hue, okay? But in fact, we are the original American Indians. Um, you know, we can look at the, the 1828 definition of what an American is. Uh, and it says something about copper-colored aboriginals who were here when Europeans found them here. And then we, we have the American being transferred to the European. And what I had something to say about that that I had not said in previous videos. But if you look at that definition, and um, what it, it's one of those things where you as you know a day goes by and you find something a nuance about it that you didn't see before and what occurred to me was in the dictionary definition of an American at the start in the first Noah Webster dictionary uh, the first edition which was 1828 we have an example of a birthright being taken in and so I guess I'm gonna to have to pull up the definition for you okay and not you know pardon this is repetitive but it is important and in me trying to explain uh, my videos and the channel so bear with me if you will uh, oh gosh I have so many screenshots okay so here I've shown this Excuse me, I've shown this before and bear with me, I have to show it again. But you see, now I will take something like that definition. This is from the 1828, uh, which is uh, the first edition of the Noah Webster's Dictionary, I believe. It's the very first one. And at the start, the definition of an American is tainted by the introduction of the European. And so if you would read that, please, I didn't do my mirror image. I wonder if I could do it while I'm recording. Uh, I don't know why. I, I must have changed it for some reason. But, you know, you can see it. And then, I'll, then I guess I'll read it. Uh, okay. American. It's a noun. A Native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races found here by the Europeans, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. So a definition like this, for me, is a real life example of the Jacob and Esau scripture. And I can't help but wonder how it was used by uh, the founder of the 13 colonies, that's another person we talk about extensively, King James, which was a man of color. So it's very, see, this series is, I think it's quite eye-opening for many. That's why I wanted to say, distinguish that uh, this is not really about racism. You know, uh, it, this story, the story is just so... It would, it would make a great movie if ever, anyone ever tackled it the real, the way it should be, you know, without leaving the characters as the, as they were really, uh, you know, their, their actual uh, races. Because you will find that King James is, it's a, it's a, the Jacobites were black, or would be called black. Uh, and so here we have in this first, first edition of Noah Webster's Dictionary, why would American be supplanted by European? Even in the dictionary definition, in one of my videos, I was like, it's rather incredible. It's rather unfounded. And so that's one example of what I see as religion coming to life and uh, co-signing on, on the, basically the, uh, identity theft of a people that are seen as perhaps 
uh, inferior to the the colonizing forces. And we do understand that uh, King James was uh, all about uh, Catholicism. Uh, he did break away from it, but it, it's it's the same umbrella. So the scriptures that he's going by would have been basically the Greek Septuagint, you know, or, or his version of it. And so this is a result of a mind of someone in power who would uh, very likely feel that they are under unction of God, as, as King James did feel. Now, I said it in, one, in a few of my videos, this was a man who believed in the divine right of kings. So he believed that anything he did was of God or, or un, unto or on behalf of God. And here we have this travesty. So when I speak of religion's influence, I'm really talking about this level, not your average everyday person who may not even know anything about these issues, you know? So, yeah, so see, there, there's a perfect example of a Jacob and Esau incident. The right for that some the, the 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 authority that someone would take to literally what what can we call it what do you call it when you uh, uh sidestep the the people of the country to highlight that it, now someone else is going to be called by the name of your country so in this in this instance we're looking at Europeans in particular it had to be put in the dictionary, but one would think that anyone who's born in the America in Americas or any country that they're in would that would be their native, you know, which is different from being indigenous. I, I want to say that right now. But so in other words, you are sort of stating the obvious. It would be for anyone, but this is the kind of hijack that is allowed when there's this mass idea that uh, for America is just the place you come to when you take what you want. And you disregard the, uh, the copper-colored races because now we want to deal with the Europeans born in America. And you see, this is a, this is a perfect example of why my videos are here. I am here not to be racist toward anyone or um, to necessarily uh, promote hate of, of any uh, religion. I'm, I'm strictly talking about, again, this level, the level of a king or someone in a position of power that we might not understand at the lower level of the, the the social ladder what's going on at the top and what are the goals and objectives of the religious puppet masters I, I want to call them now uh, I think I said if I didn't say it I'll say it now the reason why I, I feel I can reach human beings in as much as they are open is because I'm an example of someone who was all about religion at one point in his life until I saw what it was doing and then so then I let the religion go but I don't let the the uh, the idea of brotherly love that's not lost but to get there I in my case I had to let go of the the religion to 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 embrace the idea of brotherly love uh love of the fellow man and and that sort of thing so for me i came to a point where i realized religion uh particularly the three major ones they're not promoting that they can't uh because there's three different deities and one of my videos i say that monotheism is quite uh, peculiar in that at the same instance it's calling itself monotheism we have three gods emanating from basically one book you know uh, 
between the Quran, the New Testament, and the Old Testament, we're talking about one set of writings that have been divided. So it, it, it dawned on me that for me, this is the source of my discontent. And those who understand that will will understand all of all of it. They will understand what I'm saying. Um, I guess I'll just emphasize again. People can make the difference where dogma and years of dogma may not. I'm reaching out to people. I'm understanding that there are those who are very true to their respective monotheistic religions and mean no one any harm whatsoever. You know, that's what I want to emphasize here. Those people I am not talking to. Um, <clears throat> It would have to be the ones who are somewhat aware that in their own doctrine there is the idea that others can be treated as less than. I think that is what the travesty uh, is here. We, we don't want to do that. Um, you know, within the, the, the monotheistic traditions, there are stories of people who were under what are, what is said to be brutal, brutal slavery. Okay, so my thought about that is, if that was the case, how do you reconcile with that? Do you be become a, 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 a advocate for freedom for all people knowing what you've been through or do you become an advocate of okay now it's your turn to be my slave see that's where I realize we're not solving a problem we're just changing the characters if there's a vendetta we need to deal with the vendetta separately we need to talk about this in the open and, and be hum humanitarian about it this is what this is what's behind my videos, is what I'm trying to say. I still believe in people. I don't think I ever stopped. Uh, I know that when we've been misled, it, again, I'm an, I'm an example of that. I look at my own Christianity, and I see the many contradictions, and I had to pull up on out of that. I had to. Now, for me, that's what I needed to do. But I would hope that once people get some wind of maybe things that they were not aware of about Christianity, they will at least be of the mind to say, you know, even though this is a religion for me, I fully accept that it's not for everyone. And I fully understand that, well, this, 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 that, that's beca that becomes the hard part. Can we be actually believe that God has a place for people who don't subscribe to any of the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, what's the word, formal religions? You know, that, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the tough part. Uh, and see, that, that would be one reason why I, I don't know that religion is going to be the unifying factor, you know? I don't know if it's capable of that when the idea is, if you're not believing how I believe, you don't cut it. I, I don't I don't buy that anymore. I don't buy it. And in my videos, I try to express that the best way I can. There were moments when I think I sounded racist. It, it, it was just more, it would, I wasn't speaking to individuals I'm, I'm really speaking to what the Bible calls principalities make perhaps if that can be you know you, the it's the hierarchy of the church it's the high levels the ones who know uh, we talk of a priesthood that was expelled from Egypt that would be the ilk of the caliber of uh, authority that I'm speaking of. I know that 
part of how I feel about it is part of the mission of the hierarchy is to keep us divided. That's just how I look. I see it. I don't see uh, a lot done to bring even the three monotheistic religions together. Now they say that this will be, but you know, they, then they're saying, "Well, I'll be the new world order," and you know, we don't. That's, that's another hijack, another, another uh, uh, problematic uh, thing. You see, it becomes. Uh, you know, you have to be in it whether you want to be in it or not. And this is the problem that I've had at, at, at somewhere at the core of this is the idea that you're not choosing to be monotheistic is the means by which you can be disenfranchised as a human being. Your land can be taken from you. You can be made the lowest in the caste system. Uh, if we feel you didn't uh, do right by our God, then you can be our slaves. You know, this, what I've come to understand is what's behind what is happening in particular to the indigenous of America. We're going with that, that American definition, uh, but we're going to focus on the copper colored. Uh, people uh, then in one of my and, and I like to hold up my example of copper colors look here here this is what it is you know I'm a copper colored uh, American I, this is my my homeland and many other people who have been misclassified as Negro colored or black so ultimately what my video was asking for those people those human beings who can accept that and not be offended by it. Uh, on any other landmass, this would be the norm. In other words, I say this often, I think, uh, if we go to China, I'm sorry, China, I'm always using you. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, if we go to China, um, this kind of definition would not apply, would it? Uh, now look at that and replace America with Chinese and American with Chinese and America with China. So it would be uh, Chinese, a native of China originally applied to the aboriginals or shall we say olive colored I don't know what the you know I don't want to be uh, offensive uh, originally applied to the what's, what's the word you know some color uh, typically they it would be a, a tone a, a, a shade of yellow uh, applied to the yellow colored races found here found there by Europeans but now applied to descendants of Europeans born in in China America, my point is, America is the only one that has a built-in hijack, making America very unique of all the, uh, so it's like the people that were here, they don't, they don't cut it, they're not Christian, they're not uh, Hebrew, they're not Islamic, so we can do anything we want to them and take their legacy, now we, the European will be called America. Again, when I'm talking about uh, European, I'm talking about King James ilk, okay? These were people of color that populated Europe, okay? So, again, that's why I think my videos uh, are so somewhat worthy to be heard because it's not your typical rhetoric. I'm not racist, and my videos only made me less if I was any part racist Going through what I've learned throughout my videos, I've only become less racist. I'm at the point where I don't even, I, I, how do I say this? I just feel like the Caucasian race has been inserted, not of their own volition, uh, inserted to, as a diversion from who is truly 
at the origin of our American dilemma. And that would be the black kings that started colonizing uh, North America. I mean, it goes back to uh, the Caribbean when we had that colonization. And I can't even say it was the Spanish. See, this is why I ask people of goodwill. Please look beyond what you think you heard me say or what I even said if, if I misspoke. Because I, I will not... <laughs> shy away from the fact that I I have misspoken in, in a, at a few key places that were very, you know, I really need to learn how to edit. Um, people of goodwill. What you will find in, in my videos is unlike anything you, you've ever heard. Uh, the forces that are coming after America are not European or not even Spanish. Those were the people that were sent on the behalf of those that I talk about at, at the high levels. And these were would have been people of color. Who brought up Spain? It was the Moors, right? We all know that, right? We all know that they were African, right? So slowly, as you go through my videos, uh, I think in one of them, when America is the old world, part two, I just... The ancestors had me go off on Africa. And it just came out the way it did. And I have not changed my mind. I have not changed my mind. What all the races of the world, I think what I would like to say to you, if you're not African, this is not your fight. Emphatically, I tell you, you're not part of this. And I know it sounds crazy. I go to the origin of a thing. That I, I work in, in a library. And part of that uh, feel is going to primary, primary source when, when, it, when you need to. The Spanish were nothing but the Moors. These were Africans. Same thing with King James another element of Africa. And this is something even uh, my own people are not ready to hear. I'm calling on people of goodwill who understand exactly what I'm saying. Uh, we're not excluding white people here, okay? And what history has taught me is that when you include white people, that's when the system basically, that's when you, that's when heads start to Roll. This one is not going anywhere. You know, this head is staying right where it's at. Uh, but I think most of us with eyes will realize great leaders such as Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. What did they have in common toward the end of their lives, unfortunately? I want to say careers, but they no longer bought into the status quo, particularly Malcolm. He, he wasn't seeing race quite the way his religion was teaching him to see it. Another example of that is Stokely Carmichael with Martin. So Martin, Martin Luther King, gets infiltrated by a very race, uh, racist ideology coming from Stokely Carmichael. I'm going to name names, but uh, Dan Calloway did a wonderful video on, on that. Uh, maybe I'll link it. Uh, but little by little, you start to understand what's going on here. America is for all people, right? Welcome everybody. Doesn't matter. It's the mixing pot. No matter where you come. Except for black and white. We're not welcome to the, the party. Well, whites are welcome to the uh, parties to entertain the other races. 
but blacks are not. Why? Because black and white shall never mix. In America, we're not. In, we are separated. Okay, that's what I've learned. So I can't be racist because I know that it's going to take a united front to truly make America what it's supposed to be. Now, for my indigenous, and I will, I'm going to put some of our laundry out there. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know that we can turn back the hands of time to when we were the only people here. I, I don't know if that's done on in any other uh, uh, nation, you know. Um, what I'm saying is, uh, we, 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 we have guests in our, in, in our home and, uh, we, we don't want to be like the colonizer at the same time. We do want respect in our house, you know, so it, that is the, uh, the balancing act that we, I hope are willing to do. Uh, there are. A, a, a number of indigenous out there that know that w w it's it's not a white uh, man that is uh, the true puppet master. Uh, it, it, you 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 can go film noir <laughs> to those old films where you were shocked to learn you know, who the real culprit was. So, um, I was saying, um, we have to work together in as much as so many of us have now made America our home, uh, even if they're not indigenous, uh, all we ask, I, if I could, if I were to speak for the best of our indigenous uh, people, our American and our copper colored people, uh, uh, my uh, copper colored uh, brethren. Uh, I would say that what we would like is to have you know the truth of who we are and accept it as much as you possibly can so that we can live in a peaceful manner. If we go to Russia, we're not going to disrespect Russians, are we? If we go to Germany, we're not going to disrespect, we, we're going to see them, that's their homeland, right? This is all the uh, indigenous ask in America. And just like I said earlier, it's really not the people that's making that uh, an issue. It's the hierarchy. It's our government system that is promoting even the idea that we are black, which that has to stop. So again, here we find another example where is it the, is it the normal everyday average person in the street? No. We ask, we indigenous, if I could speak again, well, m me as an indigenous, I'm hoping that people of goodwill will see the predicament of the American Indian in America. We actually fought with you at, at some point in our history. So we ha we do have that, you know, uh, that part of our history where we work together, you know, to, to get from, uh, to help the, uh, pilgrims, you know, break away from their oppression. So we, we ask again, if you can be there for us this time in terms of seeing what's going on here, knowing that we're being misclassified so that our we have no land rights on our own land that is what's going on here 
And that is why we need people, of, all people of goodwill, not just indigenous, to make that stand. Now, when you stand up for Black Lives Matter, indigenous, we would like you to, we want your support, but just don't call us black. We're indigenous. If you believe that Black Lives Matter, we tell you, we ask you to do one better and say indigenous lives matter because America or American Indian lives matter. Uh, that would help us much more than if you, we know you mean well, at least I do. And my videos, you know, I, my very first video, I, I spoke to that, you know, how seeing so many white people at the, the uh, demonstrations uh, in the a, in a, in a George Floyd uh, incident, you know, we see you, you know, you're seen, your support, your support is seen and appreciated. All we ask is that you do not assist the system in disenfranchising us with terms like black, colored, or African American. Now, if I hold up this uh, definition just one more time, I want to call your attention to something else about this, this definition. If you could read it, please, and pause if, if you if you have to. Okay, I'll read it one more time. American, noun, a native of America. It's not easy reading this. It's not easy reading this. A na American, a noun, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races found here by the Europeans, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. That's very hurtful as a copper colored person to read that. But what I want to say to people of goodwill Notice that Europeans born in America are called American. Juxtapose that to people of color born in America. We're not called American. We're called now African American. What's wrong with that picture? Do you see the hijack is what I'm trying to say. Now this dictionary is telling you from now on this dictionary definition, from now on, do not call European, European, call them American. But how can this be done when you call the copper colored? It, I, do we, I'll pick up the penny. This is almost my exact skin tone. This is who they were talking about when they say the Europeans found us here. Okay. So now you're telling the world in your dictionary, Noah Webster, that I'm the one they found here. But then you immediately interject the European. And the European is called American, but the copper colored person that was found here is now called black. Well, well, why is that? Why aren't I the original American? You said copper colored, right? Aren't I the original American? And anyone of goodwill, but anyone of any nation, if this happened to you in your nation, you wouldn't like it. Would you? How could you? Who would? So this is the kind of thing that indigenous would like fellow Native Americans. Now, again, you are American. You're born here. You're American. There's a distinction between aboriginals, as this definition points out. So what we're asking, those who understand where I'm coming from and are okay with it, there's no reason not to be okay with it. This is what's called being what you would do to any other people in any other land, unless you're trying to hijack them and basically take their birthright. That's why I have such a problem with Jacob and Esau. I, when you really see it, how it plays out, it, it just makes your, your, your hair stand up. 
so if you my appeal <laughs> as well as my welcome video <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't think I was going to ask you for a favor did you the favor would be just understand that that is that is at the that is at the uh, the crux of my issue and coming to the the YouTube with it um, the Aboriginal should still be called American instead we're called black African American so in other words why you you're not calling the European European American why are you calling the African American this is what's being done under everyone's noses and not many of us understand that that's what's being done but again it's not from the civilian level this is coming from a political level and very often religions are intertwined in in that political level now you as a everyday man or woman uh, adherent to whatever religion you you don't really have anything to do with that political level. So you might not agree with it. And yet you can still adhere to your religion and your religious beliefs and yet still not agree that this is acceptable. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. That this is acceptable. It, it is not acceptable. But the funny thing is, it's telling you what they're doing. That's just the interesting thing. Because they're telling you the actual... It's almost like they purposely feel that this is just okay. You know, forget those copper-colored people. I'm sorry, the glare is off the chain, but I have pop-ups up here. So I can't really see my screen. Are these pop-ups? I wish there was a way to cut them off. Uh, okay, so there we go. This is unacceptable. Um, especially when you look at something like this. Now, in their homeland, there's, you know, it's just European, right? It's none of the European first applied to the whites, but now uh, applied to the incoming uh, uh, aliens from planet uh, Platernus, you know? You know, so look at that definition in the same dictionary, 1828. I did this in another video. I'm repeating myself, but the shock of it is, is 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 enough to make it worth doing again. Simple. That's what the American definition should be. Why is it not? Well, it's because American Indians were deemed to be heathen, right? By the well, when the first colonizer came, he was uh, bringing uh, Christianity, so. He felt he, on the behalf of the church and their doctrine, uh, it was okay for him to uh, commit horrific acts of genocide against these copper-colored people. This is the danger of religion. This is what I'm talking about when you hear me, when it sounds like I'm attacking you. It's I'm, No, I'm, ta I'm attacking doctrine. I'm attacking doctrine that has no place in humanity. Who said that we have to have slaves? Who said that? Do, do, how many of us think it was God that said that? Or was that another man looking to take over a legacy and, and making sure that the one he took, took takes it from it will never get in a position to reclaim it as his slave? Another very simple definitions we have with these other, uh, from the same dictionary, 1828, Noah Webster, African is a noun, a native of Africa. None of the hijack that we see with America. America has been targeted, and so have her people, her original. This is why we witness the horrors that we witness. George Floyd and all of that. They're killing the, the, the indigenous men as a means to take over the land. I mean, I'm just saying it from at its inception, that's what it was. That's what the, the, the game plan was. And it never stopped. That is why 
it called for looking deeper. I just want to show this for since we're talking about Indians and I'm saying in, I'm Indian. And that's an interesting definition on the, I believe, the bottom. You see, it's it, it seems that the original Indians were, were in the Americas. If you're telling me what that definition is telling us, there was no India when the Americas were, a quote-unquote, discovered by Columbus. It was Hindustan. So he couldn't have thought he was in India. Okay, unless America was called India, which that would have meant you went, you came to the place you were looking for. And you found West Indians there. I've said it in my videos, but my maternal side is West Indian. That is also how I claim being Indian. I, we were the ones that uh, Columbus saw here. The first colonizer it was the West Indians that he saw and referred to as Indians, not the North Americans. Although the North Americans are Indians as well, I'm just saying that the Indians that Columbus saw way back in the 1400s, which is you know way before King James got on board with North America, we were who we saw. My, my grandmother's people in the West Indies. There were Carib Indians. Carib Indians. So I'm going to read it. Indian. Noun. A general name of any natives of the Indies. As an East Indian or West Indian. It is particularly, now listen to this, particularly applied to any native of the American continent. When you wonder why I am now reclaiming my status or my, my birthright name as Indian, this is why. I'll let you read it again. So why would Indi, Indi, the term Indian apply to any native of the American continent? Could it be that America was actually India at, at some point in her history? I mean, that would be the only way this, that definite, 1828 dictionary, well, the first edition of the, the West, Western Dictionary, and we're finding out that an Indian, any person, applied to any native of the American continent. Well, I would probably put it with any aboriginal of the, of the uh, American continent. And America has somewhat like two continents I, I I guess so if you pause that just to see this is what got me to the videos when I was able to totally embrace my Indianness as opposed to being called black but it's an American Indian okay the, okay 1828 different definition of an Indian incredible incredible I don't even want to take it down. It says it all. And for, for anyone, again, for anyone who, who, who really can't conceive of it, I know it's hard. It, you know, I'm, although I did become more comfortable with knowing that I was an Indian, it wasn't easy at first. So I understand that m many people, probably particularly Caucasian people, uh... I I I can almost see the shock, you know, or the what 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 is he talking about? Uh, I don't know any other way to explain it to you. I, you're so used to us being called black, colored, uh, African, but try to look at it this way again. Every continent has its natives, every one. In the case of America, those natives are being disenfranchised from their land. Obviously, America is a very, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a uh, fruitful land. Uh, and 
the colonizers never really left. So you might imagine America may be one of the last uh, countries that is being in, in this predicament where they're reclassifying the aboriginals, the copper-colored aboriginals, to this day. I don't know where else this is going on. But we have some of our um, so-called black leaders who insist that we, we wanted to be called black. Why would we want to do that? Why would we not want to be called by our native land's uh, namesake? Do you really think that we would want to be called black? What? Why? It, it, it says nothing about where we're from. We did not choose this. We were coerced. We were mass indoctrinated in the school system because that's the, the you know, and till our, what you had was an older generation that feared that they would get uh, abused if they spoke the, the truth to their children. Their children going to the public school and being taught that they came from Africa when no, no one in their family ever said that to them. This is what colonization in the 19th century looks like. It, it's still happening. Uh, the ones who have hijacked America and want to uh, basically say that they, they're, you know, have more uh, rights than the indigenous of their own land. We're talking about kings, man. We're talking about kings, King James. And his son, King Charles, King Charles II, King Charles I. They're the ones who started the, 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 the colonies. Um, and then they figured out that they would have their white underlings do their bidding on the quote unquote new world in the new world. So then we have our American Indians thinking that white people are oppressing them erroneously thinking that white people not when there's a king involved a lot of people don't understand how how kingship works i think you know i have <laughs> it just sounds crazy but i have leo in my chart in my chart I, i'm not a leo but i have a leo in my chart i understand uh when someone says king i i, I get it you know a lot of people i, I feel like people don't they're not putting the pe they don't know what what kind of power a king especially one like the Jacobite kings who were also the Byzantine kings now these were the kings that actually held an orb in their hand that was supposed to specify world domination in that orb so I, I get it you know I I see the some people know the what hierarchy is and some people don't they just see what's right in front of them it's a white man was beating my ass, so it's a white man that's doing this to me. You, you know, we, we got to look beyond. We got to look beyond that. No, that was the person that was working for a very black king. And still is, okay? Behind all the drama today, trust. These black king's families did not go anywhere. If you recall... In the story of Jacob and Esau, Jacob was always afraid of his brother. Always. That's what's going on here. Jacob is still afraid of Esau because he knows what he did. No God would condone it. And you had to trick Esau's descendants into condoning it. But they don't even know that that's what they've done. That's how a deceiver works. On that note, I've never spoken to possible Jacobites that are watching. 
And what would I say to a Jacobite that was watching my videos, human to human? What would Esau say to Jacob? Uh, do I dare to attempt this? I, I've thought about it. I really have. What do you say to one ha who has taken the role of being your arch enemy it, forever? With no intentions of revealing their face, uh, but from behind the scenes, pulling all the strings, buying all the, the, the companies and the media that's necessary to create their narrative. What do you say to, 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 to that mind? I can only go to your own book to remind you who Esau was. Now you demonize Esau because you have to, because you're taking his birthright and everybody else's, truth be told, not just Esau's. The book tells us that. That was a plan. I, 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 I would be pressed, hard pressed to say it was God's plan, but it was a man's plan who was thought he was acting on the behalf of God. That's what I'll say. So again, what do you say to a man with a mind like that. No one is looking for bloodshed. It's not necessary. If you were to fight us, you are definitely fighting on the wrong side because no one, I repeat, no one would willingly or knowingly agree to giving their birthright away. Yes, I understand you put it in your book. That's your book, of course, you put it there. But even in your book, you speak to a time when Esau would break your yoke off of his neck. Did you ever think about that? That I guess that's one way I could approach a Jacobite. Did you ever think about what's in your own book? Or is it that you've taken the role of God so seriously in terms of thinking that you are God that you just wrote that and that slip of the tongue, but I'm God, so I don't have to go by that. Is that the idea? Just asking. But it is in your book. And whatever binding spells that is on that book it's in the book um that is going to come to pass because well it seems like pretty much the rest of it came to pass you you had us as your slaves right unknowingly and for, by force you know, and over over a series of many years, it's it's up to you, Jacob. It, it's up to you. If I were to speak to a Jacobite, look at see your situation, and if there is any semblance of godliness, you would understand that what you're doing is beyond the call of duty. It, it's it's. I would say it's making matters worse. Is there a place where you are hands off? Instead of trying to reinvent the same thing over and over with a different name and enslaving people through an imagined debt of fiat debt, we, we're, we're paying debt with debt and that's even, it's illegal, but we do it anyway. You know, and this system, you cannot uphold the system like this, Jacob. Esau never, well, it's in your book, so I can't say. Uh, yeah, you know, the book, it, you get caught in, you know it so well that you forget that, you know, someone did write it. And they had a reason for the way the stories went. So, in their version, Esau, you know, was pretty docile. So, if I were to speak for Esau, being fully awake to, to what is going on.
Jacob, you started a whole system in what we are calling the East Hemisphere. That is your domain. You have no lawful rights and truly you don't even have legal right to pull off what you're trying to pull off in the Americas. Your expelling was not an act of hate against you. Your expelling had to do with your turning your nose up at over 3,000 years of tradition. Egypt was not going to change for you. It wasn't. And Egypt has reserved her children for this awakening. You cannot stop it, Jacob. All you can do is gracefully bow out. Go to your hemisphere and deal with us man o mano. No more of the tricknology that you do, the trickery, you know, the the uh, having us call ourselves children, you know, or lost at sea, or all of that. You got to stop it, Jacob. You got to stop it. You're digging your grave deeper, you know. And the nanotechnology thing, you got to know that that's not going to accomplish what you want it to accomplish. And a mind that is awoken or, uh, yeah, has has awoken, it, it, it cannot be, it, it won't be put to sleep so easily or ever again if it's fully woke. So even... You're running out of options, and the ones you're choosing now are of the most godless that the world has ever seen. I'm going to speak to what's behind Jacob. And I'm going to speak to an ancient Egyptian deity known as Set. Set, you have a place. You have a, you have a position, you have a place. But the places you are attempting to take over are not for you to take over. The gods have given you your place. You need to step back and do what what you do. Your storm god. And now we have another god who is a, a, just another uh, face of you who's also a storm god. Set. Heru is the heir. I am Heru. I'm rebuking you. I'm rebuking you. As Heru, I am rebuking you. The council has already decided. It is time for you to draw back. And let my family go. Set, we're aware of you. It takes one or a few and then it goes out. Set, we understand you had strong desires for, for the throne. You've had your turn now. You, 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 you must go back to what the council or where the council placed you. 
you 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 you're you're on the boat with Ra. That's a pretty high position. And we can respect you in that position. But not in the position that you lost fair and square. I, I know the story said, and I'm telling it. Uh, I might link a video, but these, for uh, my uh, viewers, uh, you, you, if you know the Egyptian uh, cosmology, you know exactly who said it is, and you know why I said what I said, and you know what I'm referring to. Uh, but I'm calling out the principalities. It, 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 see, it's it, when you really boil it down, it's not even the Jacobites. It's the deity, or the principality behind that mindset. So, in that vein, I can set the Jacobites free. I know where your mindset is coming from. I, I know the force that, that empowers you. It is a storm force. It, it creates diversions as a means to, to, to grab power. It's set. And if any of our people ever dare to learn our ancient cosmology, Egypt was in the Americas. That was our cosmology, indigenous. I'm sorry, I know you don't like it. But what we are dealing with is so severe now. Set is in full force. You have to call the deity by its original name. So we have to rebuke Set and send him to his rightful position as on the boat with Ra, Amen Ra. That is where he that's his domain and what, what what does he do is he helps Ra in the ancient Egyptian cosmology he makes sure that Ra shines every day from here to eternity Ra meaning the sun bringing glorious sunlight and for that we can thank Set we can actually thank Set on that note that is how I cordially, cordially request that set forces return to their rightful place so that we can return to our rightful place. This is not our rightful place. This has to be, this is, well, in spirit, I rewrite this and I remove the European part. Now, this is no disrespect to the European. There's forces, again, these, when you go to the primordial forces, it's not just, it's not people, it's the principalities, when I do this, when I remove the European from this definition in the spirit, what I'm saying is that the European has their birthright in Europe that is rightfully yours. And for you to own that, you have to not include yourself in this definition in the spirit. Yes, you are American when, you, when you're born here. But you're not indigenous to this land. And that's just the reality. I can't go to Europe and say that I'm indigenous to Europe. Can I? That is the fairness of it. Again, if there's people that have a problem with that, I just, I bid you to, to, to look a little deeper. Trust me, you want to make sure that every man has his land. Once you break from that, your land becomes subject to a hijack. That is why each man has to desire or uh, 
uh, promote, uh, exalt that every man has a right to his own land. Europeans have Europe. Africans have Africa. Chinese have China. Americans. American copper colored. Each landmass has a, a phenotype. The phenotype of America is a face that looks very similar to this one. If you have a problem with that, then you have a problem having your own, which of course will be make you have a problem with me having my own. This is a spiritual thing. It, it's not about kicking somebody off of any landmass, but it is about if we continue to live on that landmass and call it home, respect the people you that you found here. Respect them. They're not black. They're American Indian. They're not colored. They're American Indian. They're not uh, native. They're not even Native American. They are American Indian. Native Americans will be the Tonto, and forgive me, I don't mean to be disrespectful to uh, Native Americans, but again, the, the Europeans found copper colored people here, not those what they are referring to as Taino. You know, when you see the picture of what that looks like, that's not copper colored. I, we just we're just trying to go with the truth that we have been given because trust me there's so much truth that they're not telling us you have to grab the little shreds that they did throw us it says there were copper colored people populating America when the Europeans found them or yeah how's it uh, found here by the Europeans it was copper colored races that were found here by the Europeans and from then on we've been called black that again that is a religious thing it's not necessarily uh, on a civilian level but then the civilians are of the mind that oh no we were the first uh, American Indians that would be incorrect there were no Spanish speaking like that when Columbus arrived here it's, the Spanish is coming from Spain the, the copper colored races were not speaking Spanish. It was likely some form of Algonquin. Um, but yeah. For there, I believe, for there to be true mutual respect and peace on the lands of America, the Americans must be respected as Americans. We're not African. We're not African. And I didn't call out Africa today, but Africa, you know that you, you started all of this when you were expelled. And I, I guess I'll leave it at that uh, you were the monotheistic source, Africa. Akhenaten, he was expelled and he built a second Egypt in Africa where you started to build your monotheism. And if that works for you, keep it there. But the reason why you were expelled from here, Africa, Africans, is because it was not acceptable to our ancestors. You you didn't want to accept that. And for that reason alone, you were expelled. You had a choice to make and you made it. You wanted to spread monotheism here, but you know that there is no such thing as monotheism. You even in the if we take your Abraham story, he, he came from a polytheistic origin, even in your own book, your own story. 
So why are you trying to make monotheism? I'm going to tell you why. Because you want the power. You want to be a single power where there were many powers. That's why you got expelled. I, I'm going to make a video. Hopefully. But um, I really have to let Africa know what she has done. It is not the Caucasian. It is not the Spaniard. It is not the Portuguese. It's not China. It's not Russia. This began with you, Africa. You are the one taking our legacy. I'm not saying there's no redemption for you. But if you want to begin, if you want to begin to lift that curse off your land, you need to tell the truth. Africa. You have us in a position where we see ourselves as cursed. But when you look at the surveys and the, uh, the, what do you call it? The charts that speak of the poorest countries in the world, you're on all of them Africa. You are cursed Africa. You said we were. In, in your storybook, you say we're cursed by God. Your monotheistic God curses us because we're not adhering to him. Well, as you know, Africa, we never adhere to one deity. That would be a sin for us. It was a family of gods. And our people always speak of family, but they don't understand a physical family is based on a spiritual family. No one ever talked about the breakup of the family in terms of the disrespect of the gods. The gods were a family. That is what Set was against. So there is another point by which the family is destroyed when you only want to honor one of a family of gods. So Africa, you can continue to hide and try to convince the world that your poverty is not an act of God or the God. But at some point, the world will have to look at you and wonder, why can no one help her? Why can no one, with all the money that they throw at you, why are you still the poorest country on earth? For what you did, Africa, repent, O oh Africa, America is one of the three largest exporters of agriculture, food. This is a blessed country. This is a blessed land because we rejected your system, Africa. But look what your system has done to you. When Akhenaten was expelled, he was expelled to Africa. From there, his daughter went up into Scotland by way of Greece and Spain and weaving and wobbling. She ended up in Scotland. So 
So Africa, it's all pointing to you. Yes, it was, you were one of us. It's so hard to accept that. But if you were expelled, that means you were here. But then you want to go your own way and you got your wish. You cannot come home now and try to wreak havoc on us because of what you refuse to accept. Now there are people in Africa that I understand, I understand the civilians may not understand anything what I'm saying. I'm talking about the political hierarchy. I'm talking about the confederation of nations who know the truth about America. It's either two things with Africa, and then I'll try to close. Either Africa is cursed by the gods themselves. I looked at the numbers. I saw the surveys. It's official. The last one I saw was from 2021. Nine out of the ten poorest countries in the world are in Africa. It's either God cursing Africa, the gods, or it is a political ploy to make Africa look as if she's poor. That one would be worse than the than God cursing her. Because that would show that it's all a fraud. And that it's a ploy. A ploy to what? A ploy so that Africa never has to account for her uh, African Americans. She can just say, I'm way too poor to assist you in anything you might need. Thank you. Goodbye. Or any of those who are being said to be of the diaspora. So it's either one or the other Africa. You tell us. Either God, the gods. See, I'm, I got my, my, my monotheistic program is full force. But actually, the, the Egyptians did believe in one God for us. It just had many faces. So again, it's either the gods that are keeping you in your condition of poverty, or it is you playing the role of poverty as a means to make sure that you can land grab and identity theft Americans. Because we're the ones you're coming after. How do we know this? Because we're the ones called African Americans. No one else. You are putting your name on our identity. We didn't choose that. And, it, and as much as we did, we did it in ignorance and you know it. Most of you all know that we're not African. But see, that's what I'm talking about. You're not saying anything, are you? You're just rolling with it. In one of my last videos, I said, and that's how we end up with a very African Obama in our White House. Africa. How did that happen? How does an African, a real African American, get that seat over American Indians? There's been no American Indians in that seat. But that's how you do it. You get us to call ourselves African American so that you can slip an African, a real African, in our seats of power, oh Africa. You are a sly one and you are a sneaky one. But trust, there are more people as of this age who are seeing you for what you are. When you come here, you're not even called black, are you, Africa? What are you called, white? You're, you, yeah, this is the system you set up. You're the caste system uh, creator. So you get here and you, you, we think that you're called black, but you're not called black. Are you Africa? And if you call African, you're still getting better, treat, better treatment than American aboriginals, aren't you? This is your setup. Next to us, you're the ancient people of the world.
So you set up these systems like a trap to your nearest relatives, which would be us Americans. What it is, it's, it's Osar versus Set. That's what it actually is. But now it's Heru versus Set. So maybe I did touch on my Africa speak. Maybe I've said enough for tonight. Again, it's not utter condemnation that we seek for you, Africa. If you would only tell the truth, if you had any interest in doing that, you would lift your own troubles off your back. You're not, you weren't supposed to come back to the Americas and try to take over. Do that in your, your part of the, the world. America is reserved for righteous behavior. You think the whole earth is going to be hijacked by unrighteous behavior? Greed? Because that's what it was about. The, need, the trajectory of monotheism, do I say it one more time? You have one people, one priesthood, one money system, and uh, one uh, a government, and then that transforms into a one world, new world order. That's what monotheism brings. This is what those who are expelled from Africa wanted. And they did have it to some degree in their hemisphere, whatever, you know, some people say that's the West. Everything, we've been lied to about everything. Moors. Anyway, yeah, the, the those are Africans as well. In one of my videos, I said it this way. Whenever some great mighty man falls... In the East Hemisphere, King James, a great mighty man, but he was taken over. And then the, then after that, they come and kick our asses in America. It's, I think is what we're led to believe that, oh, the Jacobites got overturned, but then everybody came to kick your asses in America. Okay. And then, so that's the same thing that happened with the, with the, uh, with the Moors. They got taken over by their white people, and then their white people come and kick your ass in America. Why is it always that? We are the target, my brother. <laughs> why Why is your problem becoming our problem? So what, you get defeated and, and those who beat your ass come to kick our ass too? What do we do to them? Or what did you tell them to do to us? Again, the Moors get defeated. Those that defeated them now come here to kick our ass. What did we do to you? Don't let your daddy's vendetta be yours. Because you got to know what your daddy did first. Don't believe when he tells you, when your daddy goes to tell you to kick somebody's ass, ask him why. Okay? So yeah, the Moors get defeated and now America didn't suffer. How so? We ain't got nothing to do with that. Uh, King James is saying that uh, he that got taken over. The Jacobites got taken over by the white ones. So always using the white man as a scapegoat, right? That's that's the game. They're elevating the white man because they can't come to us face to face. So they're hoping that the white race will do that dirty work for them. But even the white race is like, what is this bullshit? That's why they're in the Black Lives Matter, the quote unquote Black Lives. But we're gonna ask, as I asked earlier. If you could turn that into in, indigenous uh, lives matter, we got a deal. <laughs> uh, only because it's, it's, it's causing us more harm than good. They call us black, that means they get to treat us like shit. Okay, and we have no rights. We have privileges and benefits. Indigenous people have rights on their land. So yeah, I'm going to say it again because it, it dawned on me. Just for, 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 for those in the, in the back... <laughs> In the nosebleed, every time a European uh, black gets defeated, 
those that defeated the European are now coming to, to America to bust up some asses, right? But the question is, why? Why is that always the pattern? Why don't they stay there and take, they were fighting you over there, right? So they got, when they once they beat your ass, they got all of that, right? Why, why all of a sudden did they come for us? Uh, my guess is, is it's what they've been told about us again, you know, but at, it's their daddy that's sending them. They want us to believe, oh, they beat my son beat me so bad. I couldn't stop him when he came to kick your ass. Brother, we, you don't, you don't play another player, brother. We, we peep in your game. You, you so you use the media to get, get a lot of this off, but. We see you. <laughs> we still see you more than ever now, okay? So, ultimately, it's set. Excuse me. Ultimately, it's set. Because our ancient ancestors told us what our enemy was. It, it was set. And he wanted the throne. He wanted the power. What are these Jacobites and, and these Moors, are, what are they in love with? Power. Their God wants to be the only God. That's set. Egypt told us about him. See, the Christianity, they ain't going to tell you about it. They're going to call him the devil. They're going to act like they don't got nothing to do with the devil. In Egypt, they admitted <laughs> that devil is your family. Huh? How about that? It's a family member. Thank you, ancestors. You always come through. You always come through. And I'm talking about the ancient Egyptian ones, okay? I'm going, I'm going to source. Some people know the value of going to source. Others want to deal with the symptoms. And some just want to go, and go right to where the disease began, okay? So if you think I'm a heathen, how do I say this? Our race did better in society at large when they were practicing heathenism, if that's what you want to call it. Much better than we're doing now. But that's all for today. Thank you for watching. It was a little longer than I expected, but um, I did say a lot that I needed to say. And... Um, welcome <laughs> you know it's, it's it's a welcome video it was supposed to be a welcome video but it ended up being a, you know me i just get started um peace and goodwill to all who are of goodwill and to set we just say set you got your place bro just take your place and so we can take our place we understand that you're a god of chaos, okay? But there's a place for that. This ain't it. <laughs> America is not it. All righty. On that note, I'm going to say thank you again to all people of goodwill, whatever race you identify as. Uh, yeah, you can still be a goodwill, and I know that. Okay? So, till next time. Uh, be highly favored, beloved, blessed with sovereignty, prosperity, health, wealth, and all the good things. Thank you.